Police are used to collaring criminals. This next story involves police and collars, but no crimes. Fox 5's Doug Evans showed us how one department has reached out to help shelter animals find good homes. Hi, Gabby. Say hi to Doug. Somebody needs to adopt me. See, I'm Janet Moon admits she's an animal lover, so when she took over as chief of the Peachtree City Police Department, she used the department's social media to make lives better, not just on the streets where she serves, but also in the county's animal shelter. Very sweet. I don't know how my poor mother put up with me. I would come home with stray dogs, and I remember one time I may have been in the fifth grade, I brought home this dog I thought was just adorable. Well, the next morning we woke up, we had a litter of puppies. Uh, <laughs> and to my, to my mother's credit, she, she never got on to me or whatever. She just basically told me they were my responsibility. So I've always had an affinity for dogs. The Fayette County Animal Shelter brings the dogs to the police department headquarters where the chief and her officers spend time with them and then use the department's Facebook page to encourage the animal's adoption. And, and these dogs, honestly, are some of the sweetest dogs that, you, that you'll ever get to know and meet. They're lovable. Um, they just really want a home. And if we can do a little something to help them find a home, I'm willing to take the time to do it. On this day, the shelter brought Gabby. This is Gabby. Gabby's been in the shelter approximately two months. Daphne. She's still a puppy, so she still has a lot of her energy. And Chester. Another sweetie. If you'd like to learn more about these animals up for adoption, please call the Fayette County Animal Shelter. Doug Evans, Fox 5 News. All right, it was a glorious, spectacular weekend, wasn't it? And it's a great day today. It I is. Mean, you know, so we got to enjoy today because tomorrow things start to change. Uh oh. We get the rain and then eventually, oh, yeah, no. cooler air will start coming in as we get into uh, Wednesday. So let's go take a look at what's going on out there. Beautiful afternoon. Again, a lot of sunshine mixed with a little bit of cloud cover here and there. But uh, right now, not seeing a whole lot showing up on the radar and satellite composite. So another beautiful day here across the southeast with well above normal temperatures and lots of sunshine. Severe weather outlook, well, it starts to go up a little bit today, way out into the plains, out into Oklahoma, extending into Arkansas. Look what happens, though, as that system progresses to the east. The threat of severe weather shifts to the east as well, all the way into Mississippi, Alabama, and northwest Georgia. As we get primarily, this would be tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening, a slight risk of severe thunderstorms north of the Rome area, all the way up into uh, uh, Dalton and north of Canton, all the way up through LJ. So again, some of this will maybe touch Polk County over to Harrelson County. And as those showers progress eastward, they'll be fizzling out, but still the chance of some gusty winds here in the metro area. And again, that would be late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. So what's happening out there today? Not a whole lot. Hour by hour forecast showing you the cloud cover. Uh, it'll be sparse this afternoon. Coming back in, though, as we head into tomorrow morning with a slight chance of a shower coming in. Cloudy skies throughout the afternoon until the front arrives, and that's when we'll see the showers, maybe a thunderstorm or two coming into northwest Georgia by 6 o'clock, 7, 8 o'clock, passing through Atlanta, and then off to the east of Athens as we get toward midnight, get into Wednesday morning, clearing skies, so it's going to be kind of breezy, and again, those temperatures will be a little bit cooler. Rainfall totals could be quite a bit, especially in areas that receive some of those heavy downpours with that line coming through, especially up in northwest Georgia from Rome up to LJ. You're talking about an inch of rainfall there, 1.29. In Gainesville, about four tenths of an inch of rainfall here in Atlanta. High temperature yesterday, 68. I think we'll get right back to that number again for today. Only got down to 50 for the uh, low this morning. So all those numbers well above normal. And outside right now, 65 degrees. So if we keep going up as fast as we're going right now, we could hit 70 by the time it's all said and done with this afternoon. Dew points at 48. West wind at eight miles an hour. Beautiful day all across North Georgia. 62 for you in Calhoun. 62 in Clayton near. 70. 70 right now in Athens. You head over into Carrollton at 63, 65 in Barnesville, 64 in Conyers. So again, beautiful day. Highs in the upper 60s to right around 70. You'll get probably above 70 down in the Jackson area, down in Butts County, 70 over in Edenton, 70 in Athens, 64 degrees up in Blairsville. And then overnight lows tonight into tomorrow morning again will be mild, only getting down to about 50 degrees. So the storm team AccuWeather forecast for this afternoon, partly cloudy, mild, highs in the upper 60s to near 70. Then for tonight, 
partly cloudy and cool. Overnight lows mid 40s to right around 50. Extended forecast with showers, thunder showers rolling in as we head into late Tuesday, early Wednesday. And then it looks like another system comes in late Thursday, early Friday. Temperatures will be knocked back into the 50s, but hopefully we get back into the 60s by Sunday. Lisa. All righty. Thank you. Four years ago, a recently engaged Georgia couple celebrated by putting a message in a bottle and throwing it overboard while on a Caribbean cruise. It read Ben and Julie forever and included the couple's phone number. Four years later, Ben and Julie Johnson were blown away when they learned that their bottle had reached someone in France. This Saturday, that Frenchman finally tracked the couple down. We were actually at um, our daughter's birthday party and Felipe texted us and I noticed it was an international number. And I looked down and read it and was just astonished. <laughs> the couple is now married with kids and living in Cumming. They say it's truly special to know their message of love has made its way back to them. They are dangerous and often deadly, but can more be done to warn all of us about tornadoes? How southern states are playing a critical role in making some important changes. But first... The Catholic sex abuse scandal back in the spotlight with a top Vatican official admitting that some big mistakes were made by the church. I'm Amy Kellogg in Rome with that story straight ahead. Get your fork. The Catholic Church sex abuse scandal thrown back in the spotlight with a Vatican official speaking out and a movie on the subject winning big at last night's Academy Awards. Fox's Amy Kellogg is in Rome with more for us. A big admission from a top Vatican official, an Australian cardinal says the Catholic Church made errors concerning its sex abuse scandal, telling a government commission investigating the priestly abuse of children he was not testifying to, quote, defend the indefensible. The Church has made uh, enormous mistakes and uh, uh, is working to remedy those. But the Church has... Uh, in many places, certainly in Australia, has mucked things up. Abuse victims gathering here in Rome to watch the testimony. There were a lot of words that we wanted to hear, but it is only the start of the pro, you know, the hearings here, and we'll, yeah. we'll see what else happens. Show me the church manipulated the system so that these guys wouldn't have to face charges. The scandal also highlighted by the film Spotlight, which details a Boston Globe investigation into the sexual abuse of children by priests. Spotlight winning two Oscars at the Academy Awards, including Best Picture. The Vatican today is still dragging its feet on making any real reform. Pope Francis has not remained silent on the issue. The pontiff meeting with sex abuse victims on his trip to the U.S. last fall and promising to hold those responsible accountable for their actions. Dios llora. God weeps. For the sexual abuse of children. Pope Francis set up a commission on sex abuse in 2014. That commission had a private screening of Spotlight earlier this month. In Rome, Amy Kellogg, Fox News. They strike with warning, but season after season, tornadoes still prove their deadly power. Coming up, we'll tell you about a new project to keep everyone informed about approaching storms. But first, he put his life on the line to save an American hostage. Now a Navy SEAL receives the nation's highest military honor. It's time. Now for a developing story. Iraqi officials say the death toll from two ISIS market bombings yesterday in Baghdad has climbed to 73. Police and health officials say several of the critically wounded died overnight. We are told more than 100 people remain in the hospital. At least five people are still missing. President Barack Obama awarded the nation's highest military honor today to Navy SEAL who helped rescue an American hostage back in 2012. President Obama presented the award to Senior Chief Special Warfare Operator Edward Byers. Ceremony took place in the East Room of the White House. President Obama noted how unique the ceremony was in that Byers is just the sixth Navy SEAL to have ever been awarded the Medal of Honor. Few Americans ever see it. Uh, I am truly privileged and humbled that as Commander-in-Chief, I do get to see it. I've given the order sending you into harm's way. I see the difference you make every day. The partners you train, the relationships you forge, the other hostages that you've brought home. 
Buyers took part in the rescue of Dr. Dulip Joseph, who was abducted along with his driver and Afghan interpreter. Now, how southern states will play a crucial role in a new project to protect lives when tornadoes threaten. Also ahead. The race for president goes into overdrive ahead of Super Tuesday, and Hillary Clinton steamrolls over Bernie Sanders in South Carolina. I'm Shannon Bream in Washington with that story just ahead.